This Blue Burst SG review canceled. Joel thought we should review this one. Welcome back, Troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Troglodytes Guitar Show. That's right, he decided to new guitar day this one. I wanted to see the TVO in person. So let's go ahead and check this one out. It's like a, a dark mustard color. I really like these because they do look similar to like some of the custom shop offerings. So it's nice that Gibson USA spiced these up. We've got that finish on the front. It's also matching on the back and we've got it on the back of the neck. It's just that whole limed mahogany thing. But it's first utilized on juniors and specials of the Les Paul varieties. Now, what does TV yellow actually stand for? Some people say it's translucent varnish. Other people think it's TV based off of TVs actually having this limed mahogany color to it. As far as I understand, that is the most correct version. The popular myth surrounding them is they appeared better on TV. However, I'm pretty sure that one's been heavily disproven at this point, but most people still view it as gospel. So let's do a quick recap in case you missed the previous episode. Recently, Gibson gave the SG model lineup an overhaul. Well, at least their colors anyway, with six new options. You get Pelham Blue Burst, Cardinal Red Burst, Classic White, Silver Mist, Translucent Teal, and TV Yellow. Those are being offered on both the 1961 reissue style offered from Gibson USA at $1,999 and then also on their SG standard version, you know, the 68 Batwing Guard. Essentially, they're the same price, but just different mandatory trim levels. For example, the more expensive 61 actually comes in a Gibson hard shell case versus their soft case. And we talked about some of the electronics, you know, PCB versus hand wired, but we'll have to double check that today. But hey, I thought I should bring this up. Guitar Center actually does have an exclusive Silver Burst in the SG Standard variation only. However, it's priced just like the 61s at 1999 with the soft case. And that version actually came out a couple of months before the Custom Color <laughs> series. So I think they kind of got done wrong at that point. Just pick what pick guard style you like the best, as well as the neck profiles. Our 61s over here are a little bit thinner. However, I was scared these would be like blade thin. This is still rounded. And I actually have not reviewed this version. Back in 2019, when they first revamped the original collection lineup, I just decided it's not worth reviewing the stop bar variety one because the new Vibrolas were all the rage. Besides just our guitar and the case, what kind of case candy do we get? A Gibson strap, warranty and Gibson app info, case keys, owner's manual, polish and cloth, and a Gibson multi-tool. To learn more about this one, let's go ahead and throw it on the workbench to take an individual look at its parts and specs. Let's go ahead and start here with our pickups. We've got the Rhythm 61 in the neck and the Lead 61 in the bridge. If you're keeping track, that is a different pickup set than what we saw in the 68 style that had the 490R, 490T. But within the circuit, the bridge pickup reads 7.84K ohms, the neck at 7.93, and the middle just for fun, 3.94. Got a really long neck tenon on this one. That's impressive to see on Gibson USA. And it's marked TV for TV yellow. And the bridge pickup cavity, SG61 style. You can see a little bit of leftover buffing compound, and maybe it's not as finely sanded as some other cavities that we've seen recently, but far from the worst. And this is what hides underneath your tenon cover, a small little shelf route that is normally covered by this piece of plastic. Now, when I first unboxed this guitar, I was a little bit scared because it looked like the bridge was completely decked down, but yet I still wanted a little bit more downward adjustment room on the action. So I was scared I wasn't going to be able to do that. So I was looking at it and it looked like the stud was just like so thick right there. Maybe that's why I wasn't able to adjust it further. But if you look at the bottom side of the thumb wheels, they're actually hollowed out. So that doesn't matter at all. So what you're actually seeing here, instead of a completely maxed out bridge, it's just partially covering the stud. So we can actually go all the way down and touch the body so you do have some downward adjustment left on this because to my surprise when i took the strings off i was able to lower it like another two turns and then it was just completely buzzing off the fretboard this is about one turn from the bottom here and it's playing fantastic now Another difference between this and the regular SG standard is it has an ABR1 on it. It just has different studs. It's not mounted traditionally. But then our tailpiece is the lightweight aluminum. That ABR1 was very heavy in comparison to this. The rest of this will just appreciate our wood grain with our TV finish. 
basically a yellow coloring that has like maybe a little bit of brown grain fill. So this will vary example to example what type of wood grain that you get. It would be really fascinating to see one of these with like the ribbon mahogany body like sometimes you do find on these SGs. I'm not sure if that would look good on one of these or not because this is what people typically associate with the TV yellow. Lots of tight grain. Here's a look at our controls. Just two volumes, two tones, output jack on the front, three-way toggle switch. But if you wanted to take off the pick guard, it would look like this. And if you wanted to put the tendon cover back on, something like so. This finish has a whole bunch of little brown dots in it anyways. You don't necessarily notice the screw holes as much. That does look similar to some custom shop SGs. And for the sake of all your options, the untraditional no tendon cover pick guard combo. Yeah, I don't see anyone picking that one either. There's a reason they hide that. Moving on from our mahogany body, we've got the mahogany neck with our rosewood fretboard. This is a nice dark but yet streaky fretboard. And we've got our acrylic inlays. And I measure a 24 3 quarter inch scale and a 12 inch fretboard radius. I measure a 1.69 inch nut width, which increases to 2.1 by the 12th. First fret neck depth 0.81 by the 12th 0.92. Here's that neck profile at the first fret and the 12th fret. A little wider feeling, but not super blade thin by any means. It still has that nice roundedness to it, but it is on the skinnier side of things. I guess what I'm trying to say is it's not D-shaped. Because some 61 style SGs in the past have been like really wide and thin, and I was not a fan. But this one I would say it's comfortable if you like the thinner necks. I do really like the mother of pearl that they used on the crown logo right there. Got a lot of color changing and dancing to it. That's awesome. And then our regular Gibson mother of pearl logo there. Here's our truss rod. You can see a lot of router marks for that. You don't normally see that. And the cover itself is just blank. Unfortunately, we are not done talking about the headstock. The paint job is really sloppy on this example. This is what the edge of a headstock should look like if it's unbound. You can actually see the black holly veneer before whatever color the guitar is. Sadly, this example is quite poor. You can actually see where it's been covered up by the finish. But yet right here you can see like a black smudge. So most people would think, oh, that's when they painted the headstock cap black. No, that's just an area that didn't get fully covered. Then if you look at the top of the headstock, you can see it is a little bit more exposed over here, but not evenly in all areas. So this finish must be hard to control or somebody forgot to scrape the edge of this one, which is probably more so the case. So that makes this edge look a little bit sloppy as well. But this side is by far the worst when you get down here. You see how it's only exposed right there? It makes it look like a random black paint splotch. So I think this one might have forgotten to have gotten scraped. Now we'll move on to the back side. You can just see lots of nice wood grain here. And it is a two-piece body with a center seam. With one strap button at the base of the heel and one on the bottom of the guitar. But now, yes indeed, I was correct. It's hand-wired CTS pots in this particular version with the orange drop capacitors. And then here's another thing I notice. Look how you can see the wood grain on this side. It's beautiful, it's what you'd expect. Over here, it looks like the TV yellow finish got like shot a little bit too heavy in the cutaway to the point where you can't see the wood grain anymore. Now, is it possible that there's just no grain there? Yeah, but that just looks like the finish got a little bit too heavy to me. And then we can run up along this neck to appreciate the finish a little bit more before we get to our Gibson Deluxe Cluson style tuners, which is another difference on this model. And we can read our serial number dating it to 2023, 222nd day of the year, initial batch, production number 385. All said and done, this one's not a bad weight. Six pounds, 8.3 ounces. Let's go ahead, plug it in, and hear how the bumblebee sounds. First up, our neck dive test. This one's actually pretty balanced.
about you guys, but I'm really digging the tones today. It's really spanky. Love that middle position. neck pickup almost has like an out of phase tone to it. <laughs> Nearly all the positions have that certain quack to it. Now we know all about the new custom color series 61 SG and TV yellow finish. What are my final thoughts? Did we have a little bit of QC issues with the finish? Yeah, however, it plays and sounds fantastic, so I'm willing to overlook that. And I talked to the new guitar dayer and he was okay with it as well. The big shock factor this time really are the pickups. That sounded really good. And maybe it's just because I'm in the mood to play guitar tonight. They just had like a certain quackiness to them that worked really well. Another reason why I'm glad I tried it is the neck is nowhere near as thin as I thought it was going to be. I would still suggest trying one of these at a store because you might find that you enjoy it because it is rounded. It's just not quite as full as the SG standard. It's thin without being overly thin. So at the end of the day, I would highly suggest checking one of these out because there's a lot of things that look just like a custom shop, but they're no longer custom shop money. The custom color series was long overdue for the Gibson USA SGs. All right, troglodytes, I hope you enjoy your newfound guitar knowledge. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll catch you tomorrow on the next one. Take care. If you enjoyed tonight's episode, consider subscribing. I post videos like this every day. And you might even enjoy this next one.